What's up everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here. Moving on to the next unit, we're now going to talk about cost behavior. And in this specific video, we're going to talk about variable first fixed costs. And I'm sure you already know what these are. I'm sure you've already ran into them, whether back in high school or in another university course, but a little review never hurts. So the first type of cost I want to go over is variable costs. And variable costs are basically costs that vary with output. So for example, Let's say that you have a car factory and it costs you 25,000 per car to produce. So basically all of the direct materials, all of the direct labor. And so what we can do is we can maybe make a chart depending on how many cars we produce in the factory, what our total cost is going to be. Right, let's maybe go up by a hundreds. So 100 cars, 200 cars, 300, let's go up to 500, 400, and then 500. Now, if you produce zero cars, if it costs you 25,000 per car, well, the total cost is gonna be zero, right? There is no cost associated if you make no cars. Now, if you make 100 cars, if it costs you 25,000 per car, then you would take 25,000 and multiply it by the 100 cars that you're producing. And that would give you two and a half million. So that would be your cost, your total cost in producing 100 cars. What about 200 cars? Well, that would cost you 5 million, right? 200 times 25,000, and then so on and so on. So 300 times 25,000. And then we'd have 10 million for 400 cars and then 12 and a half million for 500 cars. Now you can also show this relationship on a graph. So I'm going to take these points here. I'm going to plot them. So the number of cars I put on the X axis, the total cost I put on the Y axis. So notice zero, zero, that would be here, a uh, hundred, two and a half million would be here, 200, 5 million, 300, uh, 7 and a half million, 400 and 10 million, and then 500 cars cost 12 and a half million. So notice this here ends up just being a straight line. And variable costs, they always start at the origin, right? Because with variable costs, if you're not making any output, then you don't have any cost. There's no fixed cost. We're going to talk about that soon, right? So variable cost, basically costs that vary with output. You can also make an equation for this. So you can say <clears throat> the cost, the total cost of producing a car is basically 25,000 times, let's say, uh, let's just put X, where X is the number of cars. So that would be the equation of this line over here. Another point I want to make is um, this 25,000 per car, that cost is going to be within a relevant range. So let's say that the relevant range is from zero to 500. And let's say that what happens after 500 cars, you start to get more efficiency in the factory and maybe your costs actually go down your per unit costs go down. So maybe it would be like, uh, instead of 25,000 per car, maybe to produce like the 501st car would be like 20,000, right? You get more efficiency, the, the workers start working more efficiently as you scale out. So maybe this definition, it's better to say, costs that vary with output within a relevant range. So maybe we could add that there. Basically, a relevant range is the range for which a certain cost behavior, a certain cost pattern is consistent. So notice for up to 500 cars at least, this 25,000 per car cost is consistent, right? But again, we don't know what's going to happen after 500. Maybe the costs start going down and this graph can start becoming less steep, right? So the lower the per unit cost, the less steep the graph starts getting because this here, this number would be lower, which is like the slope of the line. And the lower that number, 
the less steep the line is going to be. So this is within a certain relevant range. So just be aware of that. You may see this definition come up in your textbook. Your prof may mention it, or you may see it on your slides. Now, the second type of cost I want to go over is fixed costs. And basically, fixed costs are costs that don't vary with output. And I'm going to relate it back to the same example. So I kept the chart written out and the graph and just took out this column, this total cost column. So let's say with this same example, you have a car factory. Let's say that the total fixed costs, like maintaining the factory, so maybe like the depreciation on the factory or the lease on the factory, let's just say the total factory costs. Are four and a half million. And the time doesn't really matter. Let's just say per month doesn't really matter. Right? So no matter how many cars you produce now, you're going to have to pay four and a half million to maintain this factory. That is a fixed cost. It's not going to vary with output. So basically, the total cost in this case, if we're just looking at this, this four and a half million, it's going to be four and a half million the whole way down. Right? So no matter how many cars you produce, you have to spend four and a half million to basically maintain this factory. And how that's going to look on a graph is it's just going to be a horizontal line at four and a half million. So four and a half million, let's say that's like over here. So if you produce zero cars, you got to spend four and a half million, right? If you produce a hundred cars, you still got to spend four and a half million on the factory, right? So it's a fixed cost, no matter how many cars you produce. So it's just going to look like that. And basically fixed costs are always just a horizontal line because it's just a number. Basically, whenever you have Y equals a number going back to math, that's just basically a horizontal line. And in this case, the number, so if we say the cost, if we make an equation for this, the cost is just equal to four and a half million. There's no like variable X there, like we had before when we talked about variable costs, where X was the number of cars produced, right? So a fixed cost, it's always gonna look like that. Now again, this, Fixed cost of four and a half million, that may be only within a certain relevant range. So you may want to write that as well. Costs that don't vary with output within a relevant range. Because maybe this factory can only produce 500 cars, for example. And after 500 cars, the factory doesn't have any more capacity to produce anymore. You got to get another factory. So for the 501st car, you're gonna to have to buy maybe a second factory, for example. And if it costs you four and a half million again, then your fixed costs are gonna to jump to nine million, right? Four and a half plus four and a half. And we're actually gonna talk about that in step up costs. So like the 501st is gonna be at nine, right? And then for the next 500, so from the 501st car to the thousandth car, it would stay at nine. But again, I'm gonna mention that in a future video, but just keep in mind that this fixed cost may only be within a certain relevant range, right? So in this example, from zero to 500, it's four and a half million, but you may have to get another factory if your output goes over that. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is two types of fixed costs that you may see come up. And sometimes fixed costs, they are differentiated as discretionary fixed costs and committed fixed costs. So, the way I like to differentiate both of these, basically discretionary, the way I like to think about it is basically short-term commitments. So for example, let's say that you have a factory supervisor for the entire factory. Well, as you start producing more cars, right? there's gonna be more workers, there's gonna be more supervision needed. And so then you could hire more factory supervisors and that would still be part of a fixed cost. Or if your output goes down, then you could start laying off some factory supervisors, right? So short-term commitments, 
So you could put here like maybe some of the factory workers. Right, so that could be an example of a discretionary fixed cost, something that you could get in and out of pretty easily. Now committed fixed costs, they are more long-term commitments. So an example like this is maybe the lease on the factory, right? You may have like a five year or 10 year, or even like a 20 year lease on this factory here. And so getting out of that may not be as smooth as getting out of some of the discretionary fixed costs. So that's an example. That's probably the best example, right? If you actually have the lease on the factory, if you've bought the factory and maybe it's not as easy to sell it, to get rid of it, right? That would be a committed fixed cost. It's more long-term. It's harder to get in and out of.